Can you imagine this? At 36 and I'm a mechanic, I make 2,800 Kenyan shillings each and every day. Guess what? That is over 70,000 at the end of the month. But the problem is not that. The problem is that I have no savings as we speak. And guess what? Nearing 30, I'm supposed to be focusing on where I can have at least a home for my family, have at least a stable investment somewhere, or should I focus on actually achieving that? But I have no savings and I'm worried. I do not know even what I can be able to do. This is an individual who called me with the same same problem and with their consent he told me hey share this information it might help one or two out there and probably you're watching this video facing yourself the similar problem probably maybe you're earning more than this or maybe you're earning less than this and maybe you're getting paid daily or maybe you usually earn each and every month or at the end of the week and you're worried you feel like the time is moving i mean you're growing old the productivity is going down and you do not know what you can actually do and Today I'm offering, and on this video I'm offering you a solution of exactly what you're supposed to do so that at least you'll be able to monitor how your money is moving so that at least you can create a saving. And guess what? We not only save. Remember one thing, and don't ever forget this. Nobody can ever become rich by savings, okay? What we do by saving is to accumulate. Accumulating to raise the capital, raising the capital to do what? To invest the capital for what? To get what we call the baby monies, aka passive income. None of the baby monies is what now assures you that you're going to have what we call the generational income. It's as simple as that. And guess what? Did I promise it's easy? No, it is not easy. It needs sacrifice, discipline, and consistency. How about we do this? Let's go ahead and get to our board and dissect to do this issue so that we see what are the areas we can be able to tackle. Because he Ni real problem. Ni issue ina kuanga huku vivinje. Na ni watu wanapitia this problem. So it's actually a relatable issue. Alright? So what do we do? Now, remember one thing. There is always a challenge with the people who get paid each and every day. And one challenge is this. These people tend to have this mentality ati, okay, fine. Leo, ata nikipata doni, skuanda yote ziishe. Then kesha ntapata zingine na vitu kama hizo. Number one, before I even talk to this individual, I ask them a very simple question. Uh, how do you spend or rather spend your leisure time? And he told me, yes, I do drink. And I really drink. Yeah, I mean, like, I drink a lot. And that was the answer to the question that I was about actually looking for. Where the money is actually going, all right? So meaning that this guy is actually being affected by what we call what? Drinking a lot. All right? So the point is this. Now, the problem with people who earn a lot of money each and every day, because obviously this amount of money in Kenya, well, it's not quite like a humongous, but hey, a lot of people loved, would love to earn this amount of money each and every day. Kuna mtu huwa napata hizi pesa baada ya wiki moja. That's very true. So anyway, the point is this. Now, the very first point you need to have, this guy is suffering from what we call budgeting. The guy is suffering from what we call budgeting. You do not have that in, you do not have the understanding of what is a budget. Because if you do not understand what is a budgeting or budgeting, then you're gonna get yourself at the end of you're gonna get yourself into troubles. Guess what happens when you do not have a budget? Money shows up at your doorstep, you know, money shows up, okay. This is money, money shows up at your doorstep. Then guess what happens? Money starts to spread in any direction because they do not have another direction. Number one, expenditure, maybe let's say leisure, okay, alcohol, all right, mpango wakando. All right. And the other thing you realize that you're getting yourself into gambling. Why? Because you want to cheat the system and get rich quick. All right. And, 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 and in that manner, and then there is black tax here. And this black tax, you don't even have a specified amount of money that you can actually channel them. So at this particular point, when you have no budget, this is exactly what you suffer from. Money comes in and money goes out in every direction. Why? Because you have what we call idle money. See, when you have idle money, meaning you have money that is not directed anywhere, this idle money tends to actually get into the gambling, spending a lot and maybe buying your friends and beers and what have you. You have what you call the black tax that you have not actually monitored how much you send them, number number three, or the other one, you have alcohol issues, and the other one, you pango a candle, because, hey, you know what? At the end of the day, if you squander this money, you're going to get get another money. So what do you do when you earn money daily? That's the biggest question. It's the elephant, white elephant in the room so what exactly do you do this is what i would advise you to do actually right you earn each and every day so have at least what we call you know things are classified into different things now one thing you're supposed to understand there's something called recurrent recurrent expenditure even a government has this one recurrent expenditure what is this it means these are the things that you, they have to be paid each and every day each and every day name them number one you have to pay what rent okay i know you may like okay we don't pay rent each and every day but cumulatively we do so each and every day so you have to monitor the rent number two you have to monitor food 
right? Number four, you have to, these are things that you have to pay them each and every time, electricity, right? You have to pay for your water, right? The other thing you have to pay for your transport because obviously you don't do this mechanic job from your house. You don't work from home. You have to go where you work, all right? So there is transport, all right? So when you put this, uh, when you put all this into consideration, you ask yourself, how much do you pay at the end of the month? Let's say you pay like um, 10,000 or maybe let's say 15,000 your rent at the end of the month. Then it means that you have to set aside 500 each and every day for your rent, all right? 500. Now for your food, you know, hey, if I give them like 10,000 at the end of the month, then everything is sorted. Then it means that you need approximately how much? Obviously, you need like 400 each and every day or let's say 350 Kenyan shillings. So you need, let's say, let's talk of 400, okay? 400 Kenyan shillings because I may put 350 people, people are like, hey, where can I eat that 350 a day because that's so much and I have a family. So 400 amount of money, you put it out there, okay? So electricity, let's say you pay like say 1500 each and every month. So that means that you have to set aside how much? 50 shillings each and every day. See, these are the things that you overlook, but they play a very vital role. The other thing is water. You pay, let's say, 500 or 600. You need to put aside 200 each and every. No, is it 200? Yeah, if you pay 600 per month, you need to pay like 20 shillings, not 200. You need to pay like 20 shillings each and every day. You set it aside. Let's say you pay 200 transport for your going to and fro. And then after that, maybe let's say you have like a lunch of around uh, your lunch, maybe somewhere, maybe let's say 200. And this is quite an amazing amount of money in terms of your lunch. Anyway, it is what it is. Now, if you do the total of this amount of money, 500, that's 900, that's 900, and uh, 900 plus 200, that's 1100 plus uh, 70. This, this is like 1200, approximately. This is like 1200, all right? 1200 Kenyan shillings. Now, that is the amount of money for you to run typically, all right? You have your transport there, you have your, your lunch there, you have your, you have your electricity, you have your water, you have your everything out there, and your family has eaten, you have paid your rent. You need 1,200. Let's say each and every day you have to drink, right? Because, hey, I am not here to advise you why you should stop drinking, and obviously you know you should stop, all right? So let's say you have to drink something. You can set aside, let's say, 500 a day. And I really wonder, if your rent is taking 500 and you're taking 500 a day for, for purposes of drinking, my friend, even if I'm telling you set aside this amount of money, at the end of the day, I'm telling you you are lost. But again, hey, let's just factor in, in so that at least we see what we can be able to do. Now, you factor in that 500, and of course, I discourage it. But I'm telling you, hey, if you can be able to go below this amount of money and focus towards you, you know, stopping drinking and what have you, then at the end of the day, it means, let's say you even stick to this 500. Then at the end of the day, you meaning you need what? 1,700. And guess what? You're talking of 2,800 each and every day. So you're remaining with what? 1,100. That's what you're left with. Okay. Obviously, let's be considerate. Sometimes you may need to buy some clothing and what have you, or blah, blah, blah. you may decide to as well set aside like 200 each and every day. That means 6,000. So 6,000, let's say even if you set, the, set aside 6,000 each and every day for the purposes of what? For the purposes of, you know, for the purposes of clothing and what have you. That's called good amount of money. So you're left with 900 Kenyan shillings. So if you're left with 900 Kenyan shillings per month, so if you take 900 times 30, you get yourself 27,000. 27,000. Guess what just happened? You have your 27 Gs clean. Now, with this 27 Gs, obviously I said what? This amount of money will never get you rich, even if you save it for the next a whole year. So because even if you save this amount of money, and by the way, remember, I have assumed that you're working from Sunday to Sunday, of which is not logical. So let's say approximately you're able to save, let's talk of 24,000 right? 24,000. So that 24,000 that you're managing to save at the end of the month, okay? Now you ask yourself, I'm able to raise 2,000 or 24,000 at the end of the month. I'm 36. I'm 36 years. Now what do I do? Probably I'm assuming maybe you're married and you have a family and what have you, because that's what they told me. Now out of this 24,000 that you're saving, now you ask yourself, yes, I do have a wife at home. Now, how or what can I do so that at least I can maximize on this income? Now think of you sitting down with your partner and asking and talking to them and ask them, hey, guess what? Uh, what kind of a business have you ever thought? You see, the problem that people make is to go out to them and tell them, hey, I want you to start this. Hey, I want you to do this. I want you, because I'm a mechanic, hey, I want to start a spare part shop and I want you to be operating from that specific premise. 
Some agree and some do not because they do not have a passion about that. But if you sit them down and tell them, hey, guess what? This is not about passion. This is about being business. This is about making money and what have you. So the point is this 24,000 obviously can get yourself a good business. Maybe let's say you want to start a spare part business because, hey, at 36, we say, remember what we say? From 30 to 40 years, you learn from somebody. All right? From 40 to 50 years, you do what? You do that what you understand. Do that what you understand. So, and that's what you're nearing. So, when you're nearing 40 years and you have this amount of money, you can decide and you have four years to do so. So, if you focus on the four years to come and you're saving this amount of money per year, so it is 24,000, right? 24,000 multiplied by 12. Those are quite a good amount of money, right? This is close to, you know, the simple mathematics, this is close to 200 and this is close to 300,000 at the end of the month. Let's take an approximate of 250,000 a year, all right? 250,000 a year. This amount of money, mark you, it is enough for you to start a spare part business. Even if you won't start a humongous one, you're going to start somewhere and you're going to be making some cash out of this amount of money. It's simple. You're going to do that. And then guess what you do? Because you already understand this business or maybe you already understand this venture, you can get a, a, a business with this amount of money. All right. And then after that, you can put your wife there as the car cashier. And then from there, because you're a mechanic, you are outside. You're dealing with repairing and such kind of a thing. And guess what? You now shift from you working for somebody, working for yourself, and by the time you're nearing 45, 46, you've already actually created yourself not only a portfolio of investment, because later this money, you channel it towards acquiring your home. Because I know right now where you are, you're frustrated. You're thinking of actually going, buying a plot piece of land that is, and then build a home, and then you say your family has a home. But guess what? At the end of the day, that place is actually a liability if you do not have a cash flow. Let me repeat this because I know this is a very emotive issue. You're going out there, buy a piece of land and building a house. That is actually what we call a liability to your place. Why? It's supposed to be regarded as an asset. Basically or technically it is. But if you were to look at it from a wider angle, you'll see it as a cash out kind of an investment. Why? Because it doesn't make any sense because you do not have a cash flow. And remember what I always tell you, it's good to have a combination of both asset and a cash flow. And I, I always use this example. You can never go to a grocery store or a supermarket and shop with a title deed. True. Now, the point is, you go ahead, get this amount of money, you start a small business somewhere, and you support your, and the, the, the wife now becomes the cashier in both of you. Now, that is an example of this specific individual. Now, how can you incorporate that or contextualize this into your reality if you are out there? The point is this, if you cannot be able to be in the situation of this guy, maybe starting like a business, say you are employed or something of sort, then you can be able to focus on actually channeling your money towards something of investment. You can actually focus on an area whereby you can put this money and then you can be able to earn something. You can either put into investments like of the shares, the money market fund, the stocks, the balance fund, the bond fund, the treasury bills and bills and whatever. Those kind of things, you can actually put this amount of money until you reach to a point whereby you say, hey, guess what? Enough with being employed. I want to go ahead and start my own businesses. That's the time that you do exactly this. But this is what I'm going to give you as a parting shot. Every time you are getting your salary each and every day, make sure that at least you monitor your expenditure. Understand how much is channeled towards the rent. Understand how much you get towards your transport, towards your electricity, that is the utilities towards what we call the school fees if you have any kid in such uh, such a case then from there when you understand your numbers correctly first of all fill in those numbers it's simple fill in those loopholes once you fill all those loopholes you realize that you actually do not have money but the problem is this you get the 2800 you put in your pocket and then at the evening you feel like hey i got my 2800 and guess what the good thing is that tomorrow i'm probably gonna get the same amount of money and then you get up square squandering your money and guess what you do? This is I know how people behave or, or survive. You have your 2,800, you send some cash for the food back at home. Obviously, you're remaining with your transport. And again, you've paid the mama wachakula, mayulikula. And then guess what happens with the rest of the money? The rest of the money, you decide to, hey, go you enjoy yourself. And by the time you're squandering and then, uh, let's say the school fees is about to show up in a week's time. That's the time now you tighten your belt a little bit. Once you tighten your belt and then you start to kind of save and then like you're just surviving from paycheck to paycheck. You ain't going to get yourself into a stable kind of environment. All right. Guess what, guys? That's the end of my video. But don't forget this. You can always grab my number from the description of this specific video and give me a call. I offer those services pertaining to investment purposes or money management skills. You can as well get my booklet for only 280. Number is on the description of this specific video. Don't forget to subscribe as well because I always post a video each and every day. If you don't want to miss any, for now, it's a goodbye. See ya.